we have to press to start Minecraft Rube Goldberg and Team for Team Spark. Press to start Team Sparky Global Machine. Now we are going into the intestines of an alligator. Yuck! Hello, welcome to our room, Bob Berkeley, James from World Dark! And the potato is going to a slime bouncer, going up and up and up. Our best at present is a big room called Bug Machine. We're going like to start it right now, Lex. So fun. Welcome everyone. Wow. <laughs> you can't see us all, but we are all toe tapping and dancing in the background. <laughs> I think they saw us for a second. Still, yeah, they I did see they us for a second at the beginning. You know, still after we've seen this video many times, I still smile and laugh at some of this. Every stuff time. That is, Those are I mean, so good, amazing. man. They're so good. Wow. Okay. I'm, I should say welcome to start. I'm Claire Laveau. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for NASEF and so excited that we have another Rube Goldberg Minecraft Challenge stream today to share, first off, student videos, which I love. I'm always excited about what the kids have created. And then to um, award some prizes and to let you know about some upcoming challenges. So we have a great day coming for you. Um, let's do some quick introductions, starting with Eric. All right. So hi, Eric Leitner. Go by River. Uh, I am education content producer for Clever Like Studios, uh, educator for 20 plus years prior, loved using Minecraft in the classroom, global Minecraft mentor, and again, so much fun, love doing this stuff, and I'm going to keep on doing it. So I'm going to point it uh, slightly diagonal. See, I always have to figure oh. out how to point at the camera. Nice. Well done. Slightly wow, diagonal. that took some practice. <laughs> yeah, it I did. see how it did. I worked on like... it. <laughs> <laughs> It gets it's it's mildly confusing. It's a it's a brain buster. Is that the beginning know? of the Brady Bunch? I mean, is it <laughs> yeah, <that>? right. <laughs> That's right. They must have yeah. They must have just made it look my... in every direction, and the editors that, took care. That took a while. All right, <laughs> clever like. Cool. Hey everybody, I'm clever like. Um, I well, I got into computers when I was like in sixth grade, and ended up pursuing it in college. Had a a, a career twenty years in, in internet and software. And uh, remembered how much I love to teach and and um, and play, and so now that's what I get to do for a living. So our company builds, uh, you know, celebrates kids that are playing video games, and we sneak in the vegetables by making it educational <laughs> as well as fun. And wait until you see what they have cooked up for us today, because uh, it is uh, so fun. Well, so there's not a lot of vegetables. <laughs> not a lot of vegetables. <laughs> not a lot of vegetables. That's uh, true. It's no, okay. You don't know. You don't know. There's, we're there's sneaking them in. Cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jennifer. Uh, so, hello, everybody. I am in the Rube Goldberg quadrant on this part of the screen. <laughs> and um, I am here uh, be pretty much, like I always say, it's an accident of birth. Rube was my grandfather. Yes, he was a real person. And I keep the kind of Rube train on the track so we don't deviate too much. So that's uh, that's what we're going to do. That's why I'm here. Um, but I love seeing what you guys do, um, you know, in Minecraft. It is certainly uh, uh, an incredible uh, thing for to, to watch, especially for an old lady like me, because I don't really know what you're doing, but I know what I like. So. So there you go. It's always fun. <laughs> That's fantastic. Love and it, quick it, little it. backstory. 
we became connected. NASEP had been doing esports programming for a few years. And of course, the Rube Goldberg Institute had been um, helping students learn about physics and science and engineering and STEM by building crazy contraptions that accomplish a simple task. And our two organizations came together to jointly present these Rube Goldberg Minecraft competitions during COVID because no one was doing anything in person then. And guess what we discovered? This is so much fun and so good for learning that we're going to keep going. And I'll use your analogy. We're going to keep going on both tracks. So you still have the live competitions happening, which are phenomenal. And then we also now have these Minecraft competitions going, which are phenomenal. And I know Eric has some show and tell, if you will, for us today. See, and that's why I like you, Claire, because while Jen keeps the Rube train on the Rube tracks, you keep the live stream train on the live stream tracks. <laughs> I uh, do my best. <laughs> perfect segues, perfect segues. So um, a few weeks ago, we had on our stream, our very first stream, we announced challenge one. Uh, and challenge one was to simply demonstrate to us that you understood the concept of a Rube Goldberg machine, that you understood that it was made up of chain reactions of varying events. Um, and we got a ton of submissions um, and we want to share a few of the ones that really that got it right now. We had a lot that got it admittedly, and some of them we chose to share because the video quality was a little better. So, you know, we always talk about that. Make sure you're checking your video quality and things like that. Uh, but we've got three we want to share. Now, keep in mind, these are not our um, raffle winners we're going to announce those a little bit later these are ones that we want to highlight because they really it's clear that they got it uh and they got it so much that they kind of tweaked on challenge two a little bit here they touched on it a little bit because some of them included music and theme right out of the gate so they're getting it you know um now keep in mind challenge two is uh you know was supposed to end today we had some contact that it was a little short right we only had challenge two out there for about a week uh we had some teachers who said their students had a little trouble submitting so we're going to keep challenge two going uh for a few more you know for maybe another week or so we'll keep it open uh so if you haven't submitted for challenge two yet we're going to keep that going because we do have another live stream later on in our season here so we're going to keep that one open but we're going to do some challenge one right now so let's take a look at some videos from challenge one uh and we're going to start with a submission from team ev Let's take a look. All right, so again, short and simple. That's all we asked for was show us some weird chain reactions. So, right, what did they have? They had a panda that's bouncing across slime blocks. You know, that triggers a zombie spawning that chases a villager around. That triggers, you know, the big event at the end that they had there. Mm -hmm. They included music, you know, it was kind of absurd. Like, they're getting it, right? Like, these are clearly the things we want to see in their builds. Uh, I like how they leveraged the, uh, the zombie AI to uh, yep. only path across, you know, blocks that are safe, so it avoided... Uh, jumping into the lava so you could see it kind of walking the maze just by using the AI of the of the entity. That was cool. You know, and I watched a ton of the videos. Zombies were really popular. The kids really <laughs> liked to use zombies in their build, and I'm here for it. I love the zombies. And again, the fact that they've got an AI, and if we know that they only walk across certain surfaces or that they chase other entities very specifically, there's a lot of ways we can use them. All right, so let's take a look at another one. Uh, and this one I liked because they included not just the elements of the Rube Goldberg machine and the chain reaction. Oh, my cat decided to jump in the way here. There's a cat tail on the screen for you. Um, that's not part of the chain reaction, at least not yet. Um, <laughs> but they also, <laughs> reaction, right? they also <laughs> themed their environment out a little bit. And literally just in the preseason, we didn't even ask for it, but they knew that, hey, look, that's part of a good Rube Goldberg machine. So we're going to check out a video uh, from Team Four Musketeers. <laughs> This is the start of our build. Now we go in. Our build starts by going into a Egypt pyramid.
the next part is a chain reaction of our build. It starts by spawning a zombie. Now our zombie will spawn a villager. The zombie will chase the villager to the very end of this mini maze. Now the villager will activate the machine that will do the next part. <laughs> Lastly, oh, the villager will activate heart. the very last part Just of our lightning. build. The end. Wow. <laughs> you know, one that thing I love, great. and we had this we had this last season too, is you know, like not everyone is comfortable narrating, but there's all these really great tools out there where you yeah. can have the narrating done for you. You can do text to speech, mm -hmm. you could put subtitles on the screen, which we saw from both teams so far. So if you're not comfortable speaking on your recording or on your stream or, you know, having your face there or whatever, there's lots of ways to do it. And those are really clever, but good point. That was a really good yeah. one. Yeah. All right. One more. Uh, and this one came as a submission from a student without a team name and that's okay because it was still a great submission. So we'll just use the name as the submission team. Uh, so this one comes in from Logan C. So Logan C's submission. Uh, let's check that one out. I love that town. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, man. it's really cute, right? Wild West. <laughs> <clears throat> That's like a sneak peek of Farmcraft right there. My yeah, God. a little bit, a little bit, even from a design <laughs> element, right? Yeah. So again, we only asked for three chain reacting steps, and they did that, right? They actually had more than three, because uh, you know they put the the disc to activate it into the into the note block from there, or the jukebox. That from there, that activates the boat which goes across the water from there, the boat uh, triggers. And this was my favorite, uh, the agent, which means they used uh, code builder uh, for, for one element of it, which is really cool. Cause we did not see a lot of code builder being used in machine builds uh, in years past. There were a few, uh, but we love to see coding as part of those builds. And yes, you are allowed to use code builder if you're familiar with it. Um, and then of course uh, that triggered the rail cart, which took us to that next scene. So I feel like we're going to continue to see that one grow because there was just so much potential in that one already. But yeah. What I love about these is they really throw you into the story and they're actually like, I want to know what's going to happen in, you know, in each of them. So it's pretty exciting to see that unfold and to see how clearly they understand this. So mm -hmm. very exciting. And the best part is this wasn't even the challenge about theme or story or humor. Mm -hmm. This was the challenge about just showing us some chain reactions, but like they dove right in and said, no, no, you gotta like include theme. You gotta include music. Like, of course you do. Um, so they get, you know, they, they took it so much further and showed their understanding so well of what this really needs right. to be. Right. Obviously we want to see a lot more steps in your big build and your final build that takes you all the way to the final activity, which is to build a lunch um you know and we didn't get any lunches yet but we will um so that's exciting it, it can be a lot of work to get to building your lunch you know there sometimes it is involved. sometimes i wake up in the morning and i don't want to do it at all so yeah right. I get it. exactly yeah i'll, so I'll order basically. lunch i don't need it. <laughs> exactly <laughs> that could all be right. an option actually what if you ordered lunch and somebody else created it and delivered it to you that's another <laughs> way to get a lunch Mm -hmm. There's another exactly. Idea. That's your machine build. We have to get yeah. that one in the mix here. <laughs> we do. We, we do. There we go. All so right. you know, you know, I know. Look, I know we're about to jump into a Minecraft world, and on this stream, we're going to focus a little bit on you know going through the the design process and the build process and working as a team and collaborating and making all of this happen. Now, admittedly, building a whole Rube Goldberg machine on a live stream 
would be really difficult. We've tried it in the past. Boy, that, that time flies by. Uh, it's yeah. way, too, way too fast. <laughs> so we've done some pre-building. And the great news is we'll be talking about how we can share some of that with all of our viewers, all our participants and stuff, which will be great. And we can actually have like a secret little extra bonus challenge in the preseason that uh, we're going to announce. It's, it's just a little secret fun one. Um, but we're going to get in and build and we'll talk about some of those best practices like, you know, and there's no perfect or right way to do this. My crafters work in all sorts of different ways, but we're going to share what we're doing as well. Eric, and before I, you dive in, I just want to yeah. ask a question. You Do you have a oh, line yeah. open? Because you're kind of, it's stuttering a little. The, the is it stuttering a little? I have a feeling it is because all of this stuff is open on my screen. And, it's not uh, as bad as it has been in the past. So Oh, good. That's so good to know. So I'm only slightly robotic. That's good to know. <laughs> Usually um, when I pop Minecraft back open is when it happens and then it eventually catches up. So let's go. We're at DEF CON. Uh, whatever, the, whatever, the, whatever uh, you know, the lowest DEF CON is, that's where we're at with it. <laughs> okay. 2.9? I don't know. <laughs> do, do I need to troubleshoot or can we, can we power I, I think we can keep going. Keep going. Going. We'll, okay, we're going to power we'll through it. Uh, um, wave but, the white yeah. flag if we need to stop. Okay. I, I wanted good. to point out that the reason that we have, I almost said brain, <laughs> Brian no, brain is here good. today, our, our brain, the brains behind the operation here, is um, we've had different guests on previous live streams, and it's it's a it's an exciting career possibility. We always try with NASEP to highlight what you might do in careers that are connected to esports or the games that you love or that kind of thing. I would say, Eric and Brian, you two have sort of the dream job of many <laughs> students who watch this stream. And so we want to give you a sneak peek at what goes into all this building and this creating, because believe it or not, this can actually be your job one day. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, I had, um, yeah. I put out a tweet talking about like, you know, I had to spend three hours the other day building a cow cannon in Minecraft for work. <laughs> Uh, for work. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm sharing your screen here. Yeah, there we go. So check this out. All right. So we started, you know, we're going to talk about our process a little bit. And, um, you know, we decided, and it's not always, you know, how teams portray it, but we're going to talk about our process a little bit. We decided what better place to start than with the theme, right? Like where, where we're, or even the setting, right? We're going to have to build this machine somewhere. Where do we want this to take place? Because setting is part of the overall theme, right? Where does our build taking place? What are What does the environment look like? And we saw some really good examples of that in the submissions we already showed, right? Like that desert scene, super cool, right? The boat going across the water, that looked great. Um, the pyramids, awesome. Like all of those are really good examples of setting that we already saw submissions from all of you uh, bringing to the table, which were phenomenal. So we decided, like, look, we're going to build a lunch. Um, so where are some places we have lunch, right? And we could build lunch in a kitchen. We could build lunch uh, at a school cafeteria. We could build lunch. So we decided to go for the backyard barbecue, if you will, right? So we've got a whole scene here we built uh, with our backyard barbecue kind of going on. And uh, we did some of this in advance. So yes, there are some things you'll notice that are, like, already done and happening. Uh, for example, yes, and this was Jen's request. Jen, this was your request. So if you got more requests, you know, do it. Uh, the burgers do flip. We were literally doing this during one of our calls, and it was like, well, can the burgers flip? Yes, the burgers can definitely flip. So they are animated. Uh, I would like flip. to purchase the self-flipping <laughs> yeah. barbecue. Self-flipping. I feel like barbecue. that's a Rube Goldberg machine waiting to be built. Yeah. Is the self-flipping burger one, right? Do we need a challenge for next year? I think we're ready to go. Um, so we created our setting um, and what we decided is actually we're going to provide this world file to all of you, not necessarily to use for your builds, but as a form of inspiration, because there's a lot in here for you to check out. Uh, we went so far as to even include some of uh, Rube's drawings on the TV over here, which is really That's cool. Amazing. Oh, right. So you can come check all of this out, which is great. And uh, there's actually a little secret hidden something in this world. And we'll talk about that in a little bit because that'll be part of the next little fun challenge that we're going to put out there. So these world files are available right now on the NACEF site on the Rube Goldberg page. We'll show you before we leave. Uh, and we do have them since this is not specific to a version of Minecraft. We do have them for Education Edition, for Bedrock, and for Java. But let's get into building. So we started this process already, and we decided best <laughs> practice was to work backwards. So we started thinking, OK, who is the lunch for? What are they going to have for lunch? How do we build that? And how do we get that machine then happening backwards? I'm so going to say we, that is yeah, how yeah. builders approach 
uh, the competition builds also. They typically start with the last part uh, of the chain yeah. reaction and then build backwards. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense. I don't know who yeah. said yeah. it, but it's a famous quote. Begin with the end in mind. Yeah. Right? When right, right. Take, not just. No, is that everyone or yeah. is it just Claire? <laughs> <laughs> Was it just Claire? You froze up a little it bit is. there, but that's okay. I don't know. I saw we were all there. captivated. <clears throat> I think we were all wondering if it was our network that went Wait down for it. Yeah, there you go. OK, um, so we decided, you know what? The raccoons always show up at the backyard barbecues or at the picnics <laughs> or at the, you know, the park when you're trying to cook food. So let's feed them. Let's just feed the raccoons. Don't do this in real life. If you go to the park and there's raccoons, don't feed the raccoons. Yeah, but the digital raccoons, yeah. you know, the digital <laughs> raccoons we could feed. Uh, so we've got a raccoon here that we're going to feed. We've given him a plate. We've given him the bottom bun. We've given him a little lettuce or whatever on the bun. And he needs the whole burger. Uh, and this is where three hours of what do I do with my work? Uh, I build a cow cannon uh, came into play. And so this cow cannon has got just some redstone activating it inside. Uh, there are a lot of cows in there. Be glad my audio is not sharing because the cacophony of cow moose is deafening. Um, <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. It is. Uh, but if we hit this pressure plate inside, it launches a cow, cow goes flying, and then becomes a burger. So we actually started with the end. Um, and Brian had a really good idea. Brian, share what your idea was here, because otherwise we have to kind of keep ending this world, starting again, or, or going over there and breaking everything by hand. So what you got? So you're talking about the reset buttons? The reset buttons. Yeah, so we put some reset buttons over here little uh command block that just kills the uh the entities and then also fills things with air re basically replacing um the, the pressure plates that trigger the build back into place so you can reset it and run it again real easily wouldn't it be nice if life had a do-over button like that life needs oh, a do-over button the, on the undo, the undo yes. would be amazing where's Man. the undo button for that awkward thing i said in high school that i can't get out of my head 30 years later right where's that undo button uh, right. um but <laughs> but you know we used command blocks structure blocks to create those resets if you're not familiar with those if you're a relatively new minecraft builder those can be a little advanced i do recommend of course part of this competition is do your homework look these things up learn how to do them um, but also if you're not familiar, there's other things you can do. Like I, we could have designed everything. Uh, we could have exited this world, made a copy of our world file, ran it there to see if it works. And then if it does work, come back here where it hasn't even been run yet and keep on building. Yeah. Especially if you're so messing you just make with copies, TNT. test it. Right. Especially if you're yes, making back up before you, uh, before you trigger it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I love so the I, uh, the theme that we've talked about a lot for this um, Rube Goldberg challenge is around story and narrative and humor. And I love the humor that you've worked in. I mean, a cow cannon. Come on. Right. The cow cannon that the cow lands on the bun and becomes the burger. Right. That's not immediately. Bad. immediately. Well, and I again, have, I love I think it was important for us to say no cows were harmed in the making of this <laughs> Minecraft world. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I am a vegetarian and I still built this. So, you know, we're <laughs> But I love I love how you played with scale because it's so again there is so much humor in a cow cannon and the cows are like pocket cows they're tiny right, uh, right. <laughs> oh yeah you need a little pocket cow <laughs> a little it's a cow. Pocket cow and it's yeah. a lot tinier than the raccoon and it ends up as part of his burger so they're cow I mean, nuggets just, that's right that, that's Rube in a nutshell now in the ultimate insult to injury here for these poor cows <laughs> that we're turning into hamburgers uh, Brian while I was working on the cow cannon. Clever has decided uh, we need another cow to kind of bounce down on this slime that has been spilled here by whatever child was probably eating at the picnic, a uh, toddler, <laughs> and a cow triggers the cow cannon. So let's run it from up here, right? Uh, so we, do, we we created that step to do that. Then we created the cow cannon to do, you know, to trigger the hamburger spawning. And now we need something to trigger that. And Brian has created yeah. this step a up little here, pressure so. plate here that triggers the dispenser to put the mine cart on the track. The mine cart goes and then triggers a little detector rail that triggers the cow to go flying. The cow goes up, shoots over to the side. There's a little command block that scooches him over once he hits the, the, the peak of his uh, of his jump, hmm. and 
Look, he landed right there on the pressure plates, and we have a burger. Yep. So let's do a reset. Reset. And as we have said many times, notice it's not just a roller coaster. There's no roller coaster Slide yet. Slide that cow down. <laughs> but no. that's something that is is tempting, right? Is to just put something Always. in the mine cart and let it roll. And no, we're after chain reactions. All right. So this is where we as a team now have to decide, and Brian will discuss this, uh, <laughs> what do we want to trigger this step, right? We're working backwards. We know what triggered our hamburger to spawn. We know what triggered our cow cannon. We know what triggered this thing over here that you've created, this bizarre slime cow monstrosity. What uh, What's going to trigger that? So I was uh, I'm thinking about this. I was wondering if we should... I was kind of inspired by one of those bubble columns. So I'm wondering if we should maybe build a straw coming out of this cup okay. um, and have some, you know, like a, a an entity summon down at the bottom and have them come flying up and trigger something at the top that maybe spits out a chicken and the chicken floats down slowly onto the pressure plate. That makes sense to me. So you want to do like a glass tube up and over? It's like bendy yeah. straw, right? We're I think it would bendy have to, straw. Uh, well, I don't think we can do a bendy straw with the bubble column. So maybe we okay. have to just kind of have it once it hits the top. Maybe that triggers like a trip wire or something like that. And that trip wire uh, will, can trigger the um, the dispenser to drop the chicken. OK, so we want to go straight up from the middle or do we want it to kind of line up with the pressure plate we got over here? I think um, we should ha yeah, have the center like lined up with the center of the okay. table there. That's where the bubble column should be. So the straw can be four blocks all the way up. What do you think? You want to do just like one of these, like all the way, like just going all the yeah. way around? Yeah, but you don't you don't have to do the corners because skip the no, corners. Yeah. All right, we'll skip the corners. Keep it keep it round ish. I say round ish. There's no round in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'll, I'll grab a dispenser. I could have used probably some fill commands or something for this if I wanted to speed up this process. But um, you know, I think we'll you're, keep doing, it you're simple. Doing, doing the work. I'm doing the work, right? Sometimes you got to just get your hands dirty. Yep. It occurs to me that this entire process is a giant chain reaction. It really is. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest issues uh, and like one of the challenges that students have to solve that we have to solve while we're doing this and so on is like, what do we do to clean up if everything goes wrong? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's so you could run it multiple times. That's the interesting part of it. It's almost like I, I felt like um, that's how coding works a lot of times. So you're figuring out like how to get something working. And then once get you get it, it working, you're like, oh, that's great. Now, what do I do for all the times that it doesn't work? You know, and so like right. you have another cycle of work that is to handle the, you know, the exception handling. And it's kind of like that in this where you're like, I want to build the machine to work. And now I want to build it to reset itself so it can work again. That's another level of code and thought and effort that you should be willing to embrace. Right. So if we're making a bubble column up, we need... Soul sand. I'm always forgetting which one goes up and which one goes down. I, 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 I we'll have to. Let's experiment. All right. So we'll get some soul sand. I know the other one is the magma block, right? Yep. I'm going to just make sure that you have a okay. um, solid bottom here. So you remove okay. that and it's filled with water. What, you don't want the water spilling out? The bottom <laughs> I mean, place? I do. I do. <laughs> we talked about cleanup. I mean. <laughs> water does clean up pretty nicely. Okay. Sweet. Where are my bubbles? I might have missed it. <laughs> I might have missed a gap. <laughs> uh, are they under the solid base? I'm not getting any bubbles. Am I using the wrong thing? Um, let me just make sure that we have. All right. Well, magma is working. The bubbles are going down. It is soul sand, right? I'm not losing my mind. There we go. Now it's working. Column of water first, then block. Uh, this is what uh, happens when you go good. from version to version. It doesn't always work the same way. There we go. We got bubbles. 
Okay. So um, I, I put a dispenser down here. I can go ahead and put what's the, what's, who's our victim that's going to trigger, that's going to come flying up to the top here. Uh, like who do we want flying out of this yeah, and landing on our well, pressure should, plate? Should it be a pig or a... Um... We can't do cows all day. It can't be mm -hmm. all about cows. Um, I thought you said just... it was a chicken. Is well, it a chicken? Go chicken? chicken will fall out of the top. Oh, I feel like okay. We should, I mean... Another the chickens fall nice and slow, creature. though, which is something I do exactly. like about the chickens. Yeah, that's How about a potato? Meant. I was gonna say, is a vegetable an option? I feel like we want. Yeah, do we need to? Do we need a, We need some variety on our plate. Do we need to not just be all protein? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if an item will trigger the uh, the tripwire, the you know, a detector. Let's... I think it does, but you know, this is why we test things. Let's see what you got going. I hope y'all are seeing the creative process happening here oh. and the try. Fail, try again, succeed, get an idea, try something else. This is creation and engineering. You throw in a potato? Oh, did you block my... Um, are you not a... Dispenser? All right, let's... <laughs> or did I block your dispenser? No, and there's a know. lot of teamwork no. going on here. So. Oh, hold on. oh, I see what you mean. Inside, inside. Yeah, it looks like it is. You need to make a pathway to the, oh. the glass block there. Yeah, you're going to probably have to build something around that. And we, Do a little uh, flooding. Right, is this okay? Should be. Yeah, you want your dispenser probably okay. right there facing right above that soul sand. You are flooding the place. Do I need to get oh, yep. some sponges? Nope, you're already replaced. Uh, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So does this it's work? a warm day, the water just evaporates. No big deal. There's the potato. <laughs> Okay. Oh, um, oh, you broke the soul stand, though. You got to let me go down and, and just wait, exchange but, but it. I'm going to put it on the underneath part and see if that helps. Okay. It still needs to be in contact with the water. No, let me break this one and replace it. It should work. Although I did just earn myself a potato. Hey. Um, <laughs> we might need to rewater this thing if there's any missing. No, why is it not doing it at that level? That's interesting to me. Uh, let's water block there. and There we go. Needed Aha. to put one to replace the block. Wild. Let's see if this right. works All now. All right, go for potato. Oh, we are go for potato it is. launch. It's going. Yeah. It's going. Yeah. Wow, it keeps going. It's flying up into the air. Wow. And it lands wow. right on the side. Ooh, that's, that's perfect. Exciting. That's exciting. Uh, that's got tripwire written all over it. <laughs> we have to give credit to uh, the legendary potatoes. You know, the potato <laughs> journey is their <laughs> idea. <Legendary> <laughs> if you so, missed last week's session, we featured the legendary potatoes. <laughs> Um, All right. Let's get a tripwire and some string and see if uh, that uh, we could redstone. Yeah, it. we can. We can even redstone right over to this dispenser if we need to. I don't even know if you need to. I was going to say, we, what if, if we? Uh, well, if I mean, if tripwire through. doesn't work, we could. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, um, I see. You have it happening on the way up. Okay. Just walk through it. Let's see. Uh, is there anything in this dispenser? Not yet. No. So right, um, uh, I have another potato. I'll throw yeah, one in throw there. Throw a potato in there. See I only happens. got one. That way we don't make a mistake. Are you ready? Did you yep, do yep. it? Uh, just walk through. Yeah. Uh, so no, that's not triggering it. Okay. I, I think that glass block could be uh, a little bit of an issue there too. Let's. Um, you want to replace that? Something solid, just to see if that makes a difference. Is that filled Let me up? See if the potato is still in there. Potato still in there. Okay. There it is. There it yeah. is. But it's launching way too far. Okay, so let's do the chicken now. Let's just see how far the chicken shoots out. All right, you got one handy? Um, <laughs> All right, I'll get a chicken. I'll get a chicken. Uh, I got the chicken. I eggs. feel like I should okay. just say once again, uh, do not try this at home with real objects. Uh, <laughs> wait, you don't have a chicken, chicken dispenser at home? Well, yeah, you know, I mean. All right, this is doable. We can work with this. We can move that pressure plate right over to the side. Oh, I love it. Uh, I know Jen loves the slow build. I know up too. the suspense. Uh, I just love with the. So I think we can literally just move the pressure plate, and we should be in good shape. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna have to uh, slash, and we have to be very careful with our commands because we have so many cows in our world. We don't. Yeah, you don't want to empty the cow kill. cannon. I don't want to punch the chicken. Don't make me. Can we just yeah. lure him away? Can All you? Right, cool. Can you just go? There you go. Thank you. Oh, 
Sad oh. chicken face. All right. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give this a test just from the tripwire. Let's go straight from the um, tripwire. Straight from the tripwire. Okay. Yeah, like, let's just spawn a chicken. One right, step at a coming. time. Do, 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 do. Oh, chicky go. Chicken's going. Let's go. He's thinking about it. Like, he's like flapping so hard. There's a hey. Oh, we did not get a push. Uh -oh. Because the pressure plate triggers the redstone. Okay. So we so, have to solve that. Yes. But look, um, we already have progress. We should now be able to spawn a potato. <laughs> look at that. Look. What happened? Did he get in the cart? Yeah. Oh, he let's hope that that actually happens. <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> That's amazing. So one of the things we could do from a, a you know a little maintenance standpoint is I could get a... Um, I could get a command block and have the the chicken. First of all, I think we should. That's super interesting. The the question is, should we should we trigger the the redstone? Like, should we just power the rail out of the gate? Like, we could probably just power the rail out of the I gate. I think we can. And not have to worry about it. I so, agree. Um. See if a let me just get a, a little redstone torch or something like that. Redstone torch and put torch. it underneath the rail and see if it starts to go. There it there. is. And then that should trigger our cow slime emitter. We're watching the chicken go by. He's gonna fall into the cannon. That's gonna launch a cow out of the cannon and burger. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to show you guys real quick. I'm going to put a command block uh, where this pressure plate is instead. And what's what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in that same command that that killed the chicken previously just to clear it up. Even though it was fun having him in the mine cart. One of the things we could do is kind of um, load, the, load that command into the command block so that when the chicken lands, it triggers the, the pressure plate, which also then clears the chicken away. So we don't have to worry about the chickens all accumulating. So there yeah, I we gotta go. Yeah, I got to say, like, where is our chicken down here? Yeah, he's just hanging out down here. Yeah, he's going to be chilling out. I'll run the command over there. Please uh, don't look. All right, I'll look away. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh, like, I'll just look at something else. Like, oh, look at the burgers flipping. That's amazing. Burgers it's sizzling. It's already, the yeah, that's flipping. an after-the-fact situation. All right, so um, should we try with the potato now? All right, let's try with the potato. So let's start from cool. down below. Let's start from the bottom of our drink cup. Okay. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Yeah. Let's see if the potato is triggers the tripwire. The kids watching probably already know if this is going to work. Of course they do. So that should send a potato up. There it goes. Oh, it did. That sends yes. the tripwire. Down goes the chicken. Yeah. I like this, right? Oh, this no. is kind of a pulley. Look, chicken. Uh, potato up, chicken know. down, right? We got a pulley thing going here. <laughs> Look, we got infinite burgers. Oh, because it's bouncing. Down. It's oh, bouncing. Yeah. yeah, but the good thing is the command block worked. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna definitely have some some chicken. Have some chicken. And then there goes issues. bouncy cow, bouncy cow. Oh my! Into the cannon, shoots the cow, burger. <laughs> I love it. Love it. I like in the corner too when it says that you've killed a potato. <laughs> killed potato. How sad. That's oh, quite the right. hamburger. Oh, just look at a cow over here. There you go. Oh, it takes, uh, there's 10 second intervals on. Oh, no, that's the mine carts. I have a little command block running by where the mine carts land. It'll uh, break the mine cart and then clear the sitting mine cart items. So it's a kill command that uses the entity target selector. And by the you way, for those up. of you who are using, yeah, and for those of you who are using Education Edition, um, in Education Edition, that same command is known as remove. So you would use same same exact command, but use remove instead of kill. So I have to ask a question. Mm -hmm. If if maybe you want, okay, here's the hamburger. If you wanted to delay mm -hmm. the bun going on top and maybe do like frisbee pickles or you know, <laughs> sport, you know ketchup. Or you know, throw a milkshake over to the side. Like how? How? Like is that something possible? It's definitely possible. We could have done a lot more to kind of like you know, for lack of a better term, this is me you know dating myself here a little bit. We could have definitely dagwooded this sandwich a little bit more. 
right? Lots of layers. <laughs> really, really make it piled a, high. A Dagwood sandwich is about 18 feet high. For, right. We got to go really high, know. you know, many layers. <laughs> um, you know, think, uh, think like New York deli style sandwich, right? It's sort of a vertical version of an Italian giant hero. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. It's a foot long, but high, not wide. Or right. Long, really. <laughs> a foot high. <laughs> right. All right. So that works. That totally works. And again, I think our next step in the process. Oh, I see what you've done here to prevent the bounce. So is that going to end the life of the potato before it keeps bouncing? Um, yes. So let's Aww. see if that works. R.I.P. Potato. So right, the I'll, second I'll trigger, yeah. So the second trigger, let's the trigger throw... command block that kills the, the there we go. potato. I threw a potato, potato. onto the pressure plate. Oh, uh, potatoes helping potatoes. Potatoes. That's right. Yes, exactly. I love the flying oh. potato. So when the flying potato uh -oh. that gets out of the goes. top of the thing, where does it go? Uh, to potato heaven. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> when potatoes are no longer needed for a Rube Goldberg machine, they go to potato, potato. You land. know what? And this is where we can get into. Uh, oh, your uh, your cow. Did it work? Oh, it did work. Okay, I just missed the step. I didn't. I didn't rush over fast enough to see the the whole shooting of the potato cannon. Um, but you know what's funny is, uh, and pun intended, I guess. Um. A lot of the humor that we got in years past from these things was in the dialogue, right? So if you create something like that, like if, if I heard someone say like the potato launched up and then the potato goes to potato heaven, I'd be laughing. Um, and I would too. Right, 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 right. And it can be in the description and in the dialogue that you create with your world, right? Like maybe that's and something I would make a that. note of. Oh, that was funny as we were building. Let's make a note. We're going to say that when we record. Yeah, we, lo we love that. That's what we like. We're all about what you're doing on camera there and on screen, but also what we're hearing. Exactly. Absolutely. And so we only have, let's see, about one, two, three, four, five, maybe six steps, five steps uh, in this machine so far, right? And the requirement, the rules say we need at least 10. Um, not to mention we need to share or have uh, certain examples of um, our simple machines. Although this one does make for kind of a good pulley. I like when the the potatoes are going up and the chickens are coming down. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. you know, we've got something that kind of models that behavior here at least. Um, but obviously we've got a long way to go in our build. We are definitely not going to get there right now. Um, but let's go over all of that because one of the things we do are going to share on this stream, of course, is this is the start of our big build. This is when they begin. This is when you start making your full fledged lunch machines in Minecraft. So let's uh, jump out of this for a second. But before we do, and I can keep things going as Brian is here, you know, building and stuff like mm -hmm. that as we watch. Um, we do want to announce um, the raffle winners from our challenge one. So we tasked you with doing essentially what we're doing right now, which is show us some steps of chain reaction. And uh, we shared some really good examples of that. But everyone who entered that one got entered into a raffle. And so we're going to have three raffle winners that will each those teams will take home right now a $100 Amazon gift card. And those teams are, uh, and I basically say the name of the team and who submitted it. Uh, so Team EV, which is actually one of the ones we shared oh, earlier on, uh, submitted by Eric K, who spells, I'm going to point out Eric K spells his name correctly with a K. Uh, so, Since you called that out, I, I also want to point out this it was, was not a raffle. Bias. That was That's completely right. random that that happened. Totally random, cool. right? Yeah. And we had the ones we wanted to share before we even completed the raffle, you know, because right. we were going through and saying, which ones do we want to share on stream? They did a great job. So win win for uh, Team EV today. <laughs> uh, team, or this one is reverse, uh, Blockiosaurus team, which I love that name, uh, <laughs> submitted by Alfonso G. Woohoo! Congratulations. Uh, so they will take home. Awesome. They will take home a $100 gift card. And uh, this one didn't have a team name, but it was submitted by Emma R and featured Jerry the Pig. So they know who they are. Jerry. So Jerry the, the video pig. from MR featuring Jerry the pig is our third raffle winner. Um, so you should be receiving uh, an email from NACEF, um with your details for your Amazon gift card for your team. So congratulations to those three teams who won their challenge one raffle. Uh, as we said, we are keeping challenge two open for another week or so. Uh, and if you want to be entered into a raffle again, uh, we will be doing the same thing for that challenge two, I should say. I think I said challenge one. Challenge two, which was to kind of theme out your little build. 
And then, of course, uh, the big build entry page is now open. So we're going to jump over uh, to the NACEF website. Oh, I may have accidentally removed <laughs> there we go. Brian from the world when I do that every time. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's head over. So I'm actually going to, again, back up all the way to the NACEF website here. And we'll go from here. So we are on the NACEF website. And we have a bunch of little things to announce here. Uh, this is exciting. So first things first, we're going to go to play. We're going to go to Minecraft competitions. And we're going to choose this super, 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 super cool looking uh, Rube Goldberg badge. Hint, hint coming real big. Love that um, badge. This, if you like this badge, this is what yeah. the hint that's coming. Uh, and I'm going to click in there. Oh, look, there's the badge again. We really like the badge. Uh, and again, you can still register. Your teams can still register. Uh, in stream one, we went over how to do your submissions via Flipgrid. Uh, so if you don't know how to submit via Flipgrid, go back, watch those streams. All that information is there. Um, there are resources, of course, below for how to do that uh, and how to record in Flipgrid and all the steps you need. But before we go on to there, Brian and I, we just shared of uh, the world we were building in. And while we're not going to share the machine parts that we were creating, like the cow cannon and stuff, we want to share that environment because we want to inspire some of our students who have never done this before to what does it look like if we try to theme out our world or if we try to create setting or we try to create some humor. So the world that we created, we're actually sharing it with you. Um, now, keep in mind, your final build doesn't have to be your own creation, but we want you to go in there if you need some inspiration. Uh, so you will see that the custom Minecraft world for the Bedrock, for Education Edition, and for Java, all three are the same, just different versions for the different versions of uh, Minecraft are available here for download. Uh, just to walk you through that real quick, if I click, let's say, for example, on the one we were in today, which was the Bedrock version, uh, it'll take you here. Do not download all of this chaos individually. Uh, okay. If you just go up to the top right corner, you'll see a download button, and it'll download the whole file. So you want to do that from up here on the top right. Right it's underneath the NACEF logo, logo that you can see on the stream. <laughs> it's right behind the S there in NACEF, I promise. Oh, yeah. uh, if I click that, in fact, uh, you'll see that it does loading. And then it'll actually just go ahead and download the whole file, which you can't see because that's popping up behind stuff. There we go. And then you see some of my world files and things. So that is how you're going to want to do that to get those files. And before we go on, there's a mini challenge right here. Somewhere in that world file. Somewhere in the world that we've been sharing. Somewhere in in here. Oh, I think I kicked Brian out, but that's okay. <laughs> Somewhere in, in here, there is a hidden room. Now, there are technically two hidden rooms, uh, but one of those hidden rooms has instructions. And if your team should find that hidden room and follow the directions that are provided in that hidden room, the first three teams to do it are going to win something. Jen, what are they going to win? They're going to win this, uh, and you can see it on my phone, hopefully, a hologram Minecraft Rube Goldberg sticker. So can you see it? So I we've got one. the badge in hologram form. And the oh, first really three cool. teams to find the hidden room and follow the directions, uh, we will send a sticker pack of five stickers their way. White, one for each team member and one for the coach. <laughs> cool. All right, so that's so download those. the world, find the secret room, and then follow, follow the, the instructions. instructions, and we will magically know that you've followed the instructions. And that's you'll it. Get a prize. Sweet. That's I it. Love it. Yep. It's All the right. Best Easter egg hunt. It is. It is. It is. All right. So from there, though, we want to go to big build. Now, keep in mind, you're going to want to make sure you follow the instructions in the team guide. The team guide is available right here because there are some components you need to make sure you're including in your big build. It's not just a video. We actually need two videos of your run showing that it works. And that way we, we can ensure we get one view of it that really is like a good clear, we can see everything you've done really, really well. Um, but we also need you to submit um, a document kind of uh, explaining all of the steps of your build, right? So it's basically gonna say step one, this happens, step two, this happens, step three, this happens. So we want a, a, a document telling us a Google doc uh, or a Word doc that you can submit right there in that Google form. Uh, and that's in the team guide. It'll explain it. Um, all of the steps of your build so that when we're sharing these on live streams, we know what to look for. We know that you've included those things. We know what step is each step. We know that you've done the 10 steps minimum that you're supposed to do, that you've included examples of the simple machines, things like that. 
That's what that form is going to demonstrate to us. So we need to get that as well. Uh, if you need to watch the previous streams, all of that is, of course, linked here in the YouTube channels. So make sure you watch those if you're not sure how to do the Flipgrid. Uh, you can read all prizes. about the prizes, which include $200 <laughs> Amazon gift cards. We're up in the amount, right? For our winner winners. Um, yeah. There are nine different possible winners, of course, in this. Um, and then, Winner, winner, burger, dinner. Right. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, uh, we will have it's not here yet. It'll be it'll be going live just real soon, though. Uh, you'll have you'll see the big build submission page right below. And of course, if you just go to the Flipgrid link as well, which is right here. Uh, let me see if I can pop in there um, and you do have to log in. So let me do a login. Why not? I'll log in as a contestant. Right, you'll see the big build submissions for each of the categories are here as well. So there's your home division, your junior division, and your senior division big builds uh, ready to go. All right. Awesome. Eric, I really appreciate your going through step by step because it, I mean, it's all in one place, but there are a few steps to go through. Mm -hmm. And the last thing we want is for somebody to build a really cool machine. And then they don't qualify for the prizes because they don't submit two views or they, you know, we want to make sure you do everything so that we can give you the best shot possible at winning and also at being highlighted because who doesn't want to have their build shared in this format? So and we exciting. love seeing it. I mean, that's yeah. exactly fun part. Yeah. lots of inspiration there. So definitely like uh, inspire us with your clever and creative ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. I will say every year when we get back together to figure out the the new year's challenge we always are referencing machines that we saw in the past mm -hmm. and they may not even have been machines that got into the final you know top tier but they made an impression on us so really we do love seeing and just know every single one of your machines gets seen by our team absolutely Definitely. seen and celebrated we yeah. love the work. And that's part of the reason also why we why we're doing the raffle for the prizes for uh, these preseason builds, because we know some of you are brand new to Minecraft. And so if you're creating a machine and it may not be as extensive or in depth as somebody who's been with us, for example, for three seasons, we still celebrate the fact that you're learning and you're coming along. And so that's why we want to give you a chance to win some prizes also. Absolutely. So yeah. speaking of which, let's go over some just minor details. Uh, one, keep in mind uh, that teams can be up to teams of four members uh, per team. And yes, uh, the same adult sponsor. So if you have got a classroom that wants to participate and you've got, you know, 40 kids in that room, uh, one teacher can have 10 teams of four but and act as the adult sponsor for all of them. Um, so just make sure they do that on the registration form and list the number of players. Keep in mind also, if you don't have access to any version of Minecraft, on that registration form, there is a button to click that says, yes, I need this many versions of Minecraft education for the duration of the competition. And Masef is amazing and will provide those for you. Um, of I feel course like we wanna... should say the word free out loud. We like free. Oh, it. free good. Minecraft Always Education Edition is free and participating in this challenge is free with prizes. So. Right. Don't forget. It's All just right. waiting. It's just waiting. Mean, I mean, just to be clear, you can use any version of Minecraft, right? Any, yes. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, you can. I use noticed any some of the players version. using the mobile version too, like the the touch mm -hmm. screen. Yeah, version, we got a few so, submissions. Yeah, yeah from phones versions. and things like that. We had one that we shared mm -hmm. that was clearly from like an iPad. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um. So also, uh, keep in mind, of course, that the big build is due on March twenty first, twenty twenty three. Uh, so you've got, uh, you know, about two months or so to work on that. If you haven't started already, that's plenty of time. Uh, keep in mind that we do need the two video submission videos as well as the Google form uh, with all of the steps listed uh, within your machine. Um, and also, we're going to be doing one more stream. We're not done yet. So February 21st, uh, we, we do our hype stream. And that's actually when we'll announce uh, and share some of the entries and the raffle winners for Challenge 2. Uh, so we will be doing those on February 21st. And um, before we head out, uh, you know, we'll say our goodbyes, we'll say our thank yous and all of that stuff. But there's been a video that we've been talking about for three straight seasons. Uh, and we're going to share it right before we leave. So I'm just going to, it's ready to roll. But, you know, let's let's do our goodbyes, but well, it's all set. Before, before we launch into that, um, yeah, you yeah. know, there's so many classic uh, Rube Goldberg machines that are out there. I mean, there are millions of uh, entries on TikTok and YouTube, but 
Um, the ones from movies that are super iconic, many of them are actually dealing with serving a meal. And this one we're going to show is a breakfast machine. So, I mean, you could sort of translate it into lunch if you wanted to, you know, <laughs> switch pancake for a hamburger, but, or a piece of cheese. Um, but we are very fond of this particular uh, Rube Goldberg machine over here at Rube Goldberg. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Brian, I want to say thank Thanks. you for being our special guest today. Thanks for having me. It was fun. I got and to play. You got to have the rough job of <laughs> building yeah. in Minecraft, so but also mm. sharing your perspective and what you do in your very difficult day-to-day -day job. Yes. And I'm kind of joking about that because <laughs> yeah. it's so much fun, but it actually, yeah. it is a, it's, it is a great dedication. Career. So yep. yeah, we appreciate you and Thank and you, Eric, much. all those details. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy this last machine, and we will see you again shortly. Bye, everybody. Bye.